Yes. So I was working on this job yesterday and I felt like when I was uh, a noob apprentice <laughs> back in the early 80s and I would forget my tools sometimes. And um, that's exactly what happened yesterday in this live stream. I had forgotten that Nathan, Nathaniel Wilkerson, who created these his Medique extensions, had separated out the tools, the trim tools and the really cool tools here uh, for his extension, his roof extension. Well, you can use these trim tools and, and uh, you know, ex extend tools uh, for any, uh, any other extension, really. Um, but I use them a lot for this. So, anyway, I keep it right up there because it's so handy. Uh, so, anyway, I, I started to do this. I started to trim all these valley rafters back. You can see what a mess I've got here. Um, yesterday, I had gone through this whole thing of building this roof. Well, it wasn't that hard. I used Medique's uh, roof extension to build it here, right? So what you have to do in these complex roof systems, especially where you have this situation where you have a, a knee wall here that's shorter than necessarily this one over here, you, you pretty much have to build the valley yourself. So you can see there's no valley rafter here. So I made a valley rafter using a, chat GPT to help me remember the valley angle I kind of really already kind of knew it was like 33 degrees or something uh, and it was kind of funny I'm, I may post that conversation I think I posted some of it but anyway uh, I only have about an hour to do this so I'm gonna get to it and uh, so I made this valley rafter here and really if you're not going to use an LVL for your valley you, you, you need to double it like this. Most uh, most building inspectors are going to be looking for this uh, either doubled or uh, an LVL. We use, in real life, we use LVLs for our valleys. Uh, the other thing is the valley, I need to check this. Yeah, it's close. The, the valley rafter has to extend all the way to the bottom of the rafters. So you can't have part of the rafter hanging down like that. That's also the case anyway because you don't want your drywall, you don't want some weird thing going on inside with your drywall. We'll look at that in a second because right now I want to feature these tools and what I'm going to do first is cut back all the rafters on this side and you'll see all these are just common rafters across here and um, I built these two little simple, these are just you know sketch up tool walls you know where you just create a mass and then I'll go back and replace it with the Medic wall extension uh, this this job is kind of unique in that uh, if we turn off the cladding why do I find I keep finding ways to drag this out on a bad about that I realize it sorry and take off the sheeting you can see here and I have this sort of temporary mass here to represent the floor system. So if we turn that off, you see I have these walls. There's two different walls. There's a standard height wall from here to here. And then you'll have your floor system. And then instead of doing what a lot of people do, oops, setting this wall on top of the floor, which gives you a hinge right here. And that's the trim <laughs> I haven't turned off. Uh, what I do is I extend these studs on down and they will be beside each uh, truss joist, wood eye joist or each floor truss or whatever we use. That gives that, that wall extra strength. Uh, especially out here in the middle where there's nothing to tie the middle of the wall. I was telling a story yesterday about how I've seen these walls bow out uh, when I was in my teens and I was framing. I was helping on a job that we had a job like this and the wall bowed out. We ended up having to take a come along and pull it back together and put some extra collar ties a little bit lower than the normal height. Anyway, enough belaboring. Is that a word? Belaboring? So I'm going to use the trim tool, the Medique Project 
project tools um, trim trim member and what you do is you go in and select the face of the group so when you're selecting these faces uh, I think these have to be groups uh, but that's just the way I, I experience it maybe that's not true but you select the face you want to trim to and it'll turn green so it'll it'll verify that then you get it to a, 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 a position here where you can see the ends of the rafters and let me turn off the gutters why why are there gutters on anyway we are not ready for rain oh man where am I oh it's not in yeah here we go and yeah Let's turn off the, um, can I turn off the fascia? I guess I can't. But what you have to do is, uh, you have to touch near the end of the, let's see if I can do it without having to turn off the, get rid of that fascia down there. Uh, so let's go back. We're going to hit trim again. Select that face. And then we're going to get right here. I'm kind of looking at this one. I'm going to start with that one. There we go. How many more I got to do? Is that it? So you see what it did? Let's see, I missed that one. Yeah. This one, when you get past, when you get into the overhang, we're going to wait on that one. We can always cut it off. But you see, now it, it cut each one of those let's kind of cancel it now if i had done and i've, I've had to do this for many years I, I have had sketchup since was it 2009 for many years i just would take and i would <laughs> i would take the end of the rafter and i would pull it back up uh like this like say i wanted to edit this one I would just take the end of the rafter and I would move it up there. Let me get where I can see. That's why you put your little guideline on there so you can see. And then I would just basically kind of get it close like that. Then I would take that other line over there, that other edge, and move it back up. I should have got myself in a situation where I could see like that. You know, and I would wing it. I mean, it would kind of work. And of course, I, then I'd have to fix the tail because this is this was nipped off for the soffit, so I'd have to extend that down, and it was a mess. And then you got this bird's mouth you had to clean up. Uh, it was just, you know, it was it time consuming, and you can't you can't do that. You can't mass produce that, and because all of these are different lengths. It's not like you can just do all of them at once. So that trim tool really is awesome. Now it looks like I've also have I also have to trim back. And this is where it's going to get a little hairy. We got we're, we're going to have a beam that goes across here and headers things off. So for now, I'm just going to trim off this uh, this um, collar tie, which is kind of a ceiling choice too. Sometimes you'll have collar ties and ceiling choice. You'll have uh, collar ties up higher. And see, all I gotta do is select the end of that. See, it just trimmed it back, put the angle on it. It's awesome. And so now, what I'm gonna do is trim these rafters on this side. So, what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll select this face. And see, we don't need these, um, we don't need these outlooks. This is where I just made a, I made a normal roof, and uh, I do need that rafter though. I don't. So you just kind of have to go in here to surgically remove things. This is where I just made a normal roof and stuck it in here, and I knew I could just come back and clip all this stuff out. So I'm going to select the side of the rafter I want, or the valley rafter. I'm just going to touch that. Usually you have to touch down near the end. 
Oops. Now, see, that's what happens if you don't touch the end of it. Oops. Okay, I canceled, I accidentally canceled the uh, command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that there. And then I'm going to go down here. Let's start over again. Always, always figure out. Oops. Always figure out a way to screw this up. <laughs> I want that, and then I want. I may have to delete this. Uh, there we go. You gotta select the end of it. Oops. I'm gonna have to get rid of this this fascia board down here. I'll I'll show you why. This sub fascia down here. Or I could clip it back. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clip it back to. Um, well, this will be easy. I can just uh, let me select it. That's the only thing about this trim tool is you got to select the ends of the board. I'm just going to cut this off right here for right now. Let's see. I didn't have to do that second one. Let's do this. There we go. Now. You need to be able to see the ends of them. So what I'm going to do is let's go back out. I'm going to select the side like that. And then I'm going to go turn this. And oh, you know what? You know what it is? I got to explode these. Okay, yeah. What 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 Nathan does, Nathaniel. I keep, I'm sorry. I, I, when I first met him, I thought his name was Nathan. He said it was okay for me to call him Nathan. <laughs> He's the fellow that developed this extension. He makes the rafter bays as groups. So what it was doing was it was trying to it it was trying to trim the group somehow, which was confusing it. Okay, so that's that, 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 that. I'm just making sure I got all of them. And see, I had already exploded that. Uh, oops, that was not exploded. Yeah, it should just be one rafter. And I had, well, that one worked. I'm going to go ahead and explode it, though, because when I do the other side, it might not be so lucky. So now let's try it. And trust me, all this is quicker than trying to, once I, you saw how, oh wait, you saw how, uh, I need to get down here at a vantage point to where I can see the rafter tails. There we go. Aha, see? I'm selecting the ends of them and they're just popping right up. See how pretty that is? Now we're getting a pretty little valley. It's going to be awesome. And let's see what else. Now we need to shorten up this. This valley rafter will just be cut off uh, at some vantage point, really, where, really, anywhere. Uh, Anywhere we could we could just literally cut it off right here if we wanted to Let's see, but I think I want to I mean for the sake of this video I think what I want to do is, is trim it back to this rafter right here Like that and look Oops, that's the wrong thing Because you want this, you kind of want these tails to come over. Oh, <laughs> this is where I was trying to confirm chat GPT's angle, which I kept having to correct, which was kind of funny. It just goes to show you that the AI is not perfect yet. So I want this, I want to select that face, 
and I want the end of that rafter. See, if you if you get it the right vantage point where you can see the end and the face, you can kind of, you know, do it like that. And then I'll just, I'm going to move this, uh, let's see if I can get by with just moving this first mouth up here. You need, to, you need a guideline because when you're trying to move stuff like this, um, it moves better. See, if I've got a reference, and that's not perfect, but I'm not going to worry. The main thing here is they're going to, this, these valley rafters are pretty much custom. You know, like that, you just have to work with them in each job and get them the way you want them. And so now what'll happen, this, this subfascia board won't go back on until the decking, the roof sheeting, see? So then you'll, you're going to be decking it. And then this, this point, you just take it over till it meets the decking. And then you take the top of it over. I need to come back here a little bit and you cut it. You just cut it where it kind of meets it like that. See, so you really, you really need to either, you know, put yourself a temporary piece of decking there if you want. Some people put their subfascia on before they do their decking, and we used to, we used to wait. We used to just let our decking hang over an inch or so, or whatever it took to get to there, and then we cut. We do our, we do our subfascia when we did our, um, our soffit. But some people put it on before, uh, you know, I guess I get it, but you really need to, especially if you have long runs like this, your subfascia needs to be put on when you're doing your soffit because it needs to be straight and you'll have to pull a string on it. And what a lot of carpenters, or what a lot of framers will do is they'll just nail it with the bottom, you know, the rafter tails, but sometimes that's not straight. And sometimes it's in and out a little bit. So... You'll pull a string on it and look down it and make sure it's all nice and straight. And if you had a rafter tail that was wanky, either in or out, you'd either trim that little tail off with a sawzall or shim it to get it. So putting your subfascia on before you deck is a little risky unless you're planning on fixing it after, you know, which it's got a bunch of nails in it at that point. But let's turn the decking back off the roof sheeting and I noticed let's put this where it needs to go oops in 2023 they put this search thing there so I'm always hitting it instead of the uh, selection tool and we don't need we don't need that we don't need those lookouts so what I want to do is this other side of the valley now Hopefully it'll go a little smoother since I've kind of got, I hadn't used the trim tool in a little while. Now what'll happen is this, um, this is another one of those funky situations where you'll, you'll realize you don't, you, this, when you realize where this subfascia is going to be cut off, you'll realize you don't need, uh, this rafter to extend out. So this is one of those things where. You're just kind of, you're on the job, you're looking at it, you're saying, what do I need, what do I, what do I not need, that kind of thing. And what you're trying to do is get the decking to all converge uh, in a neat uh, manner like that. And so whatever it takes to do that, to get that nice, clean, straight valley where there's no lumps or dips in it, that's what you're trying to do. And you want your rafters to point to the center of the valley. So that's why there, a lot of people will not understand why these rafters that are cut to the valley are sticking up like that because you want your the bottom edge of your decking to hit in the middle of this uh, valley rafter, okay? That's why they're sticking up like that. If you put if you put your valley rafter even with the top of the even with the top of the valley, then you're going to have a little trough here because your decking is going to hit on either side. It's not a 
tragedy or anything. It just looks better if you plan it the way it's, you know, you should. Especially with the onslaught of OSB and thin deckings because, um, you know, they don't do well when, when you don't have a good solid surface. So and here's, here's where I got to freaking, <laughs> I got to cut this. Did I make that a group? I got to make this, uh, I'm rambling a bit here because I realize now I don't have my, I don't have my valley on the other side. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to group this and I'm going to copy it. No big deal. Cause I did all this work yesterday. <laughs> What's funny is there's a new flip tool. I wonder if I can, I haven't used this new flip tool in SketchUp, but I wonder if I can use it. How would you do that? Oh, it needs to be flipped on. Okay. So it needs to be flipped this way. But I want to do, I want it to go the other way. Like that, but I want to copy it. Control, flip. Okay, that's cool. Now all I have to do is, now all I gotta do is uh, kind of cancel it and then take. I guess you save a step because what I was going to do before was copy and rotate it or mirror it. That's a little bit easier. What I, what I would do before we had the flip tool would be to just copy and rotate it like this. Uh, like 45 degrees. And then let's just do that. Yeah, let's do this. See what what the deal is here, which is easier in this case. So I've already selected the valley rafter, so I'm going to get my rotate tool and go right in the center of that. Then I'm going to pick a point out here. Then I'm going to hit the control key to copy it, and then I'm going to go 45 degrees. And I see you have to get the. So I imagine in some cases the flip tool is going to be handy and then sometimes it's just easier depending on what you're used to. And so see that's kind of cool because I've already got all this cut, all this cutting done. And all I have to do is, now here's a good example of what I was talking about before. You see how all these rafters terminate in the center of the valley. That's what you want and that's the that's that theoretical length, right? That you want. So when you are, when you're adjusting your, when you're situating your rafters against your valley rafter, you want to make sure they stick up far enough to, to accomplish that. So I've learned a lesson last time where I need to get rid of this, get rid of this subfascia for a second and I'll extend it later that way I can see the ends of my rafters and I'll get to where I can see all of the rafters tails how can I do that and the side of that well I may have to do it in a couple of a couple of turns here it's no big deal so I'm going to select my trim tool I'm going to select the side of my valley I'm going to boom Boom, boom, boom. Can I do it without? Let's see if I can. Yeah. There we go. See how easy it was when you do it correctly? Correctly? Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like I said. What did I just say when you do it correctly? I selected the wrong side of the. The valley. What I meant to do was select this side, which actually gives me better access to the rafters, the rafter tails. And I can just go boom, 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 boom. 
and we have our rafters cut. Now let's go this way. Let's see, are these are these already did I explode them? No, I didn't. So I'm gonna have to explode these. I'm not exploding the, the groups of the individual rafters. I'm I'm exploding the group where he's put two rafters, where he's put these bays together, these vents. Look at bent in, in timber framing. Uh, where did I go? I lost my O. Explode. Ex now, if I was smart, I would have exploded all these at once. I could have done that. For some, but something told me to just do yeah okay so now I'm here and I want to get to where I can see these rafter tails and see if I can do this I want to cut it back let's get rid of this blue thing I want to cut it back to there And then I want to go boom, 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 boom. Oops, wrong board. Ah, uh, see, if you make a, a boo boo, that one. You gotta be careful because it'll try to trim anything that you select. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one too. Well, I kind of want that one. You really want to keep a rafter on each side of the, the dormer wall. So I'm gonna keep that one. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, oh yeah, I'm gonna trim my, I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna pull this uh, bird's mouth up. here oops oops I, I meant to, I didn't grab the whole thing did I this bird's mouth is not perfect I'll, I'll fix it well I can fix it now I guess as long as I don't select the right or the wrong thing the bird's mouth on this will be different than the bird's mouth on your on your rafters and that's not perfect but you get the point and then then we can cut that back Let's get out of all this. Then we can cut that valley back to. You can imagine not having the trim tool, how long this will all take. You see, it's just easy. And then we don't need this rafter that long because the, I'm pretty sure the decking is going to converge. Let's see what we look what we're looking at here. Uh, you don't really need that, but right there is the decking will span. So what I want to do is I want to cut this back. Yeah, I, mean, I used to spend hours doing this literally, uh, just by pulling and cutting. You know, using the typical. tools that SketchUp has, which were, which were, you know, great at the, and during their inception, conception, what's that word? It's <laughs> perception, reception, conception, let's see. Now let's go, we're going to cut it all the way, oops, I'm going at an angle, that was weird. Okay. And again, that's why you can see why you have to almost have your decking on. If you want a nice cut on that subfascia board, you really need to wait till you put your decking on. One thing I'm curious about is where this line's coming from, right here. I don't. I saw that line on the other side, and I don't know what that is. What is that? It's weird. I don't. 
I've, I've never known, uh, I've never known, uh, oh, you know what? It's like there's two, oh, there was, there's two layers of, oh. This is from where I had copied the roof over. I copied an extra layer of decking over. That was weird. Okay. All right, so. The other thing I don't know what is, is this. But I'm not going to cut that yet. I want to see. I want, oh, let's see. Let's get rid of these guidelines. So, oh, I need to get rid of this thing. Because I had copied that. Yeah. So, look, we're getting cleaned up here. We're getting cleaned up. And this, the reason I'm doing this is for the owner. He's going to frame this himself. And let's see, we got to clean up these. So what's going to happen is you'll have a... You'll have a... A header in here where these ceiling joists get cut off. And this is going to be a little funky because... What you want is, well, let's just bring, a, a, we'll pretend like we're, we're not going to pretend we're going to do it. We're going to bring, oh, I see also, somehow my ceiling joist got, I accidentally moved my ceiling joist somehow. Let's fix that. ceiling joists should be I probably copied them at the wrong interval well I probably didn't select exactly the right point and then I said like times five and it just got worse each time I compounded the mistake man so this is where I'm going to cut back Oh, that's the one I was looking for. Yeah. So this one's going to have to be a double. And it's probably going to have to be an LVL. Because you're supporting. We'll look here. Let's see if we can get a good vantage point. I'm going to trim this back. To there. And then I'm going to. What is that thing? Okay. Then this one has to be trimmed back to here. I was surgically removed that one, didn't I? And this one, now what we got to do here is to pull this over. We want to make sure that, that that doesn't stick up. In real life, you might have to nip. Oh, it did. It nipped that off. That's funny. You don't want that sticking up to where it's going to interfere with your valley. Oops. Let's go back. Oh, man. I got stuck inside the roof. What we're going to do is double this. Um, we're going to double this for now. Because at a minimum. If you don't use an LVL here, you need to. You need to double that. This header. And that's not exactly at the bottom. I didn't get that exactly right. So what I'm going to do is go under here pull that down. I think that's because I grabbed it where it was nipped off. There. Okay, back out. I'm stuck inside a joist. Alright, so now what we can do is let's go fix the other side. And this is this is kind of funky because if you want this ceiling you want this ceiling to be continuous from here all the way over to the other side of the roof. So this is why you have to do this headed off beam situation for your where your gables intersect okay we're going to use the trim tool now just imagine again I hate to keep kicking a dead horse here but if I had not had this trim tool that you know it would be it'd be a nightmare so now I need to get to where I can see all of these I need to be able to see the ends of them 
So let me select the back of this. And then see if I can move. Will it cancel it if I try to move around like this? Let's see if it does. No, it doesn't. That's cool. Boom. Imagine, again, <laughs> it, it, no matter what, you have to pay for this little extension. You just saved it in this one project right here. Your whole year's use of, I mean, it's not even that expensive. I, I forgot what it is, but it's cheap. You just made up, if, especially if you're doing this professionally like I am, you just made up the, because this is, you know, this is a paying customer here. Okay. So this is awesome because now, now we have our, you can see inside, we have all that cleaned up. And now your drywall will just come down and see your drywall will extend down. Let's see if I can get it a vantage point here. Your sheet good, your drywall will just extend down. And we'll, we'll try to get us a, a thing going both ways here. And then wherever they meet, oh, let's see, wherever they meet like this, you can see there's a point, there's a vertex there where your sheets will uh, meet. That was, that's just, this is an optical illusion because we're not at the right vantage point. It'd be like that. The corners of your drywall will meet. And then you can just, your drywall guy, if you have a good one, he can put a nice... And then this is why I just kind of drew this wall randomly. Then what you do, and I'll fix this, I'll fix that um, bird's mouth. I keep saying I'm going to, but then I, <laughs> I like, I gotta do it now, man. Oops, well, it's not, I'm not editing it. I had made those a group, so I was, uh, and let's just, We'll just get it close here. I can go back and uh, tidy it up. So it'll be something like that. Birds of mouth gets weird on a, a valley rafter. And then honestly, some people, some people don't do a bird's mouth. And I've done this a million times where I just cut it off, you know, right there. And I know a lot of carpenters saying, why are you messing with a bird's mouth on a valley rafter? But it's because I already had the bird's mouth and I was just pulling it up there. But it does let your, it does let the valley extend on down where on some pitches and some situations, you know, you wouldn't have support for the, the valley of your decking. Um, the first, whichever side you put on first, and we typically put the biggest side of decking on first, the largest area we would run it over to the center of the valley, right? And then this one kind of sits on, doesn't really sit on top of it. It, it kind of does if you don't have anything, any kind of support in the, all the way down. So, uh, but you can see it's easy to draw it this way. And sometimes when you're on the job doing it, you, you kind of forget. Now look here, I got one rafter I screwed up. And... Oh, I see what happened. That's the one I didn't explode. So what I'm going to do is explode that. Get rid of that one. And copy this one over. Like that. There we go. So there you go. I think that's it. What are we missing here? We got all our collar ties in. We got our valley. We got all our rafters trimmed. We got our header. Now, uh, on this header off, we would typically use LVLs here uh, just because you're supporting that a whole length of ceiling. You could probably get by with it if you don't have any building inspector to mess, mess with you. But uh, you definitely need to put joist hangers on this side and sometimes what I'll do in a case like this is I'll just put the angle brackets on there because joist hangers hang down and they'll cause a lump they'll cause a lump in your ceiling right here because the joist hangers kind of hang down probably up to I don't know 
three thirty seconds. They're they're kind of bulky on the bottom, and sometimes you don't get them all the way up against it. So it's not just the thickness of the metal here; it's that they're hanging down because the the inside radius of the metal joist hanger is is radi has a radius on it. We'll just go into this rabbit hole right quick, and I'll show you why you don't want to use the joist hanger right here. If I can find one that's accurately uh, portrayed, let's see. This looks like a good candidate. So if you put a, and when you know it'd be turned around <laughs> every time, never fails. Let's see. Now see, you see how the inside of this is radiused? Okay, this is not exactly the way it is in real life. It's worse. It's worse than this in real life. And, of course, they can't... These are cold formed, okay? So you can't get this. They're not like injection molded or anything. <laughs> so, let me see if I can get my axis locked here. They won't go. You see how they won't go up against... You see how you can't get the thickness of the metal. And we're going down a really good rabbit hole here. Let's see if I can get back to where I was. Look, these are the kind of rabbit holes. Oh, that's the wrong. Thank God that was the wrong roof. Uh, these, are, If you want a good ceiling, this is the kind of rabbit hole you need to go down right here. Okay? Because... Right here, you see that little radius in the on the inside of that joist hanger? It will make you, and you won't even know this, it'll make you lower it even more. See, I already lowered it like a sixteenth, and it's still not. It'll be that far down. Am I lowering it at all, or am I just pretending or thinking I am? Oh, I'm on the wrong axis. Let's go down one sixteenth. Okay, let's go up. Let's go back up a sixteenth. Right, we're talking minute here. Let's go three, uh, three seconds. You see, <laughs> you see, that's basically what's going to happen right there, right? And your joist hanger is going to be hanging down that far. Okay, you see what it does? And this is really literally what it does in real life, right? That joist hanger is hanging down, okay? So when you put your drywall on, you got an automatic hump because there's a joist hanger on every... Let's see, I got that back a little bit. There's a joist hanger on every one of these, okay? What you want is the same kind of gauge angle bracket. Let's see if I just type in angle, angle bracket. And, of course, it's going to be harder to find what I want because there's a million, zillion angle brackets. Uh, let's just say Simpson. See if I can get... What am I doing? Simpson. No, shoot. Let's do Simpson first. Simpson bracket. Oh, wait. If I spelled it correctly, correctly, here we go. Now this is not the right exact one, okay? It's too small, but they make bigger ones. I'm just because I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of up against the clock here a little bit. I got a meeting with Charles about his Bulgarian brewery. But what you're going to do is you're going to find a bracket that's like, um, I think they make them for. They make them, I know they make them for two by eights. And you might say, well, what's the building inspector going to say? He's going to say, cool, because you got you got a bracket on. And you just, this is what I tell my building inspectors. Look, dude, if you want to come over here and finish the drywall, <laughs> <laughs> the, 
then uh, I'll use a joist a joist hanger. But what they want to do, the point the point is to have a mechanical fastener where you have all these screws going into the face of each of these and not toenail, just a toenail. Back in the old days, we would just toenail this or shoot a bunch of you know, nails. That, well, we didn't have nail guns in the old days, do we? Anyway, that was a rabbit hole about joist hangers. The main thing here was I was trying to show how to use the Medique trim tool to get it, uh, to get this all pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, so I don't have any comments. And this was just a quick follow-up. Uh, since I had the proper tools today with me on the job, the Medique trim tool, then really his whole his whole family of extensions, the wall, the truss, uh, Medique project is a really cool thing to create title blocks and uh, site maps and all kinds of things, foundation. It's just awesome. So I want to thank Nathaniel Wilkerson for all his hard work. Uh, he's constantly uh, working on this. I see my floor got whacked out. Easy to fix. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching.